Yeah. And I, I want to move on to the next two teams. I want to talk about the, or almost the next three teams. I want to talk about them all in tandem. And I'm going to start with the chargers and chiefs. And I want to start with them because I've got positive things to say about them. Mom. The, the, the chargers had the worst offensive line in all of football. Right. And they saw that they saw that it was clearly hindering Justin Herbert's success. And that being said, he still won the offensive rookie of the year and broke the rookie passing touchdown record, but he could have been even better with a better offensive line. You could have run the ball better. You could have won more games and that's what you're getting paid to do. I mean, you're, you're getting paid to win games, right? So they signed up, they, they went out and signed Corey Lindsley, uh, the former center for the green Bay Packers in a five year, uh, $62 million deal. And it, it just shows that they're willing to invest in their quarterback. They also signed Matt Filer, uh, who was another pretty solid, I think he was a third or fourth ranked guard or interior offensive lineman in this free agency class for a three-year, $20 million contract. And it just shows that they're willing to support their quarterback, that she, the Chargers are willing to go out and spend money, big-time money, and invest in their quarterback. And the Chiefs, they recently released Eric Fisher and uh, Michael – no, Mike Schwartz. I'm forgetting his name. Um Mitchell Schwartz and they, yeah. yeah. And they saved $19 million in doing so. Right. And everyone's like the, the, the chiefs are screwed. Their offensive line is going to be completely like destroyed. They're not gonna be able to do anything. Guess what they did. Andy Reid decided to go out and invest in his quarterback other than obviously investing in the long-term deal. He has in him. He went out and signed Kyle long who came out of retirement from the bears for a one year, $5 million deal. He went out and signed the best interior offensive lineman on the board from Joe uh, when in Joe Thune, from the New England Patriots, five-year, $80 million contract. Again, they're willing to invest in their quarterback. They're willing to support their quarterback. And I just, I, I guess I want to pivot from that to a team that I, I've seen make some moves of all in the Cincinnati Bengals, but they haven't made moves to help their quarterback. And they've made two big moves recently that the Cincinnati Bengals, they signed Trey Hendrickson from the New Orleans Saints, who was a defensive pass rusher, and they signed Chidobe Awuzie and Mike Hilton to replace their quarterback cornerbacks uh, in, when it, in Cincinnati. But the biggest thing they haven't done is they haven't helped their offense in any measurable way. And I, I'm just scrolling through Twitter right now to make sure that we are not seeing like Kenny Galladay or Juju Smith-Schuster sign with the, the, sign with the Bengals because that would ruin my entire point. But Mike Brown, the GM slash owner of the Cincinnati Bengals, has been known not to spend a lot of money on all. He's been known to be stingy. And right now the Bengals have 21, almost $22 million. And they haven't really invested any of that in offensive resources for their quarterback. They're not supporting their quarterback. Uh, they've missed out on the opportunity on Kevin Zeitler, Joe Thune, Trent Williams, who uh, we can talk about him maybe at the end, but he signed, re-signed with the, the San Francisco 49ers. Corey Lindsley. They missed out on Curtis Samuel, Corey Davis. They're probably going to miss out on maybe Kenny Galladay. But is Mike Brown at it again? Is he really at it where he's just going to be stingy? He's not going to make big moves and he's not going to help his quarterback. Cause if he is, then it's just Carson Palmer all over again, where he wasn't supported. And that ended up being the downfall for the Cincinnati Bengals. And before I sort of hammer the nail in the coffin for the Bengals, I've got to say there are names on the market that they can sign right now. Kenny Galladay is one Juju Smith Schuster. Uh, Alejandro Villanueva, the offensive tackle from the Steelers, Will Fuller, who has almost gone under the radar from the Houston Texans, uh, uh, Michael Sh- Mitchell Schwartz and Eric Fisher. All those guys are still on the market and they're quality players. If you really want to help your offensive line and help your receiving core and help Joe Burrow. And I've just got to wonder, does Mike Brown have the foresight and the ability to look past his stinginess and, you know, be like, I got to invest in this quarterback because that's the only way, that's the only way I'm going to win because the Chargers are doing it. The Chiefs have already done it and they're going to keep doing it. And I just don't see the Bengals doing it right now. 